Hi Facebook, happy Wednesday afternoon. So we're gonna be doing our lecture on um, asthma and allergies today. So just going through kind of what those are, why we get them and what we can do to help prevent them and um, decrease them overall, okay? So we'll start here with um, our normal triangle that we do. So hopefully you can kind of see it. But at the top here we have symptoms. So symptoms would entail anything unwanted that you're experiencing. And in particular, we're talking about asthma and allergies. So asthma attacks, allergies, sinus issues, all of that would be the unwanted symptoms that you're experiencing from those things. Then down here we have organ dysfunction. And over here we have nutritional deficiencies. So when you have some sort of organ dysfunction, it's because of something that your body's lacking or that it's not receiving. So that means a nutritional deficiency. So when your body doesn't receive what it needs to to function the right the right way, what happens is it functions the wrong way and you get your symptom. So, you know, our body um, just doesn't decide that it doesn't like us or is angry. What happens is there's some sort of depletion of our nutrients there. So a lot of times what we see, um, especially in the office or when we're working with patients is they're getting a depletion of these nutrients because of a few reasons. One, they're eating too much sugar. So, okay, huge thing. Too much sugar is something that we all really deal with um, and that we see in the office a lot. Um, that includes things like um, you know, cookies, cakes, pastries, those sort of things. And it even can range to things like um, if you're sensitive enough, if you're eating too much fruit sugar. So that's something we can definitely work with you um, on. It just depends on each person. But anyways, those things can deplete nutrients. Things like um, outside environmental toxins or chemicals can also deplete your nutrients. Um, things like immune challenges, our food sensitivities that might not be sugar can deplete your nutrients. So what we are able to do is figure out what's going on with your body, why those nutrients are being depleted, and what's actually causing the, the symptom that you're having, whether it's allergies or migraines or indigestion, irritable bowel syndrome, anything like that, we're able to figure out the root cause and what's actually going on. Okay, I'm gonna erase this. <clears throat> All right. And so, you know, we'll talk about allergies and asthma today, but this kind of stuff can kind of just generally apply um, to, to everything when you wanna stay well, okay? So we'll talk about at first the things that you sh really, really strictly would should avoid when you're dealing with chronic asthma or allergies. The number one thing I already mentioned being sugar. So sugar. I'll write. I'll try to write big so you guys can can see it. Everything's gonna be backwards. It looks like. <laughs> anyway, so sugar. Um, is going to be the number one thing you want to avoid. So what sugar does is it basically makes your body fight for the minerals that it needs um, when we're already not receiving them through our diet um, in an enough quantity to, to feed our bodies. That's why we supplement with whole food supplementation here. So sugar is depleting those nutrients um, and making can make your asthma and allergies worse. Another big thing that I really talk to my patients about that struggle with asthma and allergies, and I know Dr. Shannon does as well, is um, milk or dairy products. So, dairy. Sorry, I wish I could write backwards and you guys could read that, but it would probably look real funny. Um, so, dairy products in particular. Um, really can cause asthma and allergy flare-ups. The reason behind this is because um, dairy is essentially mucus forming. Um, so what can happen is if you already have sinus and lung issues, it's just gonna enhance those that much more because it's gonna help that mucus form. Um, even if you are getting this from a quote unquote, you know, a good source um, and it's a high quality dairy product, it still can irritate your body and your asthma and your allergies because that is still gonna form that mucus in, in the airways, in the lungs, um, and in the uh, sinus areas. So definitely avoid dairy. 
um, a story I have with that that actually is a personal story. Uh, my dad, he's a patient here and he has COPD really bad um, and has chronic lung problems. Um, and he uh, came to Dr. Shannon with these issues of not being able to breathe, not being able to walk long distances without having to stop. Um, and when I, sorry, when I mean long distance, I mean like 50 feet. So not very long actually. But anyway, uh, what happened is she recommended that he eliminate dairy and that he eliminate wheat. So he did that because he's a compliant patient. And what happened is his lung issues severely, severely reduced. So he um, really does so much better now. He, you know, goes hunting in the mountains for weeks. Um, he runs races. He does Spartans, all that sort of thing. Because he chose to eliminate those specific things from his diet, and dairy in particular being one of them. And we were the type of family who grew up, you know, drinking a glass of milk, you know, one, for dinner every night. And he was able to eliminate that because he chose his health over, over being able to consume that and getting rid of that dairy reduced his inflammation, reduced his mucus, and in return helped his lungs out a lot. Another thing that we suggest usually for um, asthma and allergy patients to reduce or eliminate is wheat. So wheat is just naturally inflammatory. Um, what wheat does is it just um, causes irritation and um, inflammation in the body. Inflammation is the root of all disease, so whether it is uh, the, the disease that you're experiencing is asthma, allergies, migraines, infertility, anything like that, um, it, it stems from inflammation. So making sure that you're reducing your inflammation overall in your diet by reducing things like sugar, dairy, wheat, um, you're going to also reduce your allergies and asthma symptoms. And I also want to talk about um, allergies and asthma in general. The fact that um, so many people deal with allergies and asthma and um, what we know to be true is that, you know, our body shouldn't be having such an adverse reaction because our what should happen is your body should be able to handle something like that. Um, all that's happening is a little bit of a weather change or maybe some pressure change. And in reality, our body should be able to deal with that just fine. And what's happening is that it's not because there's something deeper going on within the body. There's something missing that your body's not able to to handle that change and it reacts in a way such as um, sinus issues with um, allergies or lung issues with asthma. So what we wanna do is we wanna focus on why is our body actually reacting in that way and then replenish it with what it needs. Okay, so like I said, those are the three main foods that we would want to uh, avoid. And then we can also talk about different um, environmental factors as well. So uh, we could talk about things like chemical toxins and metal toxins. Oh goodness, sorry, <laughs> my little stand fell down. Okay, let's see, there we go. Okay, it's back up now. All right, so we'll talk about metal and chemical toxins. Okay, we'll get a different color marker for fun. All right, so chemicals and metals. So when you come in for your new patient visit, something that we could explain to you is that your body is going through uh, a chemical or a metal um, toxicity. And all that we mean by that, it's nothing to be alarmed by um, because it's something that we just unfortunately deal with in our environment on a daily basis. All that it means is that your body's being overworked by those things and it's unable to get rid of them the way it should. So what we do is we come in and help support that um, so that you're better able to get rid of them and your body's able to um, process those things and then your symptoms alleviate. So people can deal with chemical and metal toxicity. Um, something very, very interesting that we see uh, around the, the office a lot is that when the ground begins to thaw um, and it's getting warmer, those different 
metals and chemicals like pesticides and herbicides that were sprayed on the lawn, on the grass, on our crops, those sort of things, they start to kind of release back into the air and people's allergies start to flare up. Uh, so something like that chemical toxicity can even induce allergy symptoms. So people blame it, you know, on different pollens or different um, flowers um, budding, that sort of thing. And that can be definitely true. But what also can be true is that you're actually reacting to those pesticides being re-released into the air. Um, pesticides are a huge, huge huge issue um, especially in the springtime that we're we're seeing people deal with um, they're you know they're they're a stressor they're inflammation they're a carcinogen they're irritating to the body the body does not like pesticides so my recommendation is you know with those if you can avoid putting them in, on your own lawn, do so. There are different natural things that you can do um, instead. Um, I don't have that list off the top of my head right now, but um, we'll probably get you an article out here sooner or later about that so that you have some resources um, to deal with pesticides in a natural way. And then also what we want to um, also focus on is making sure that when you are coming in contact with those, you're not um, just resulting in taking things like um, uh, antihistamines over the counter. So we don't want to be taking like Zyrtec too much or things like that because what that can do is that can mess with a whole other slew of things and give you uh, other unwanted symptoms, um, especially hormone wise. So I see a lot of hormone disruption from antihistamines um, over the counter, things like that. So we want to focus on fixing the problem instead of covering up with a band-aid, which would be those over-the-counter allergy medications that you, you would normally be taking. Okay, so that's chemicals and metals. Um, other things that we run into chemical and metal-wise would just be anything that's being put onto our food. So focusing again on high-quality food um, as much as you can get it local, especially now, you know, um, things are are being shut down and I know Shannon did a video on local food the other day continue to support your people um, around you that you know sell good high quality food um, and support them during this time that that they'll stay afloat and all that okay so those are another stressors and then I'll talk about a couple I'll mention a couple of products that you might have at home that are really good for asthma and allergies in particular if something acute is happening what you can do for that okay so let's see we have something that most of us know about or it might be on our programs so we have Antronex so Antronex is a great supplement, one of my favorites. Um, I think I've actually been on it since day one, so it's a really great product. Um, it keeps my uh, whole body supported, it keeps my sinuses supported, your immune system, your liver, all of that. So what Antronex does and what it's really great at is drainage. So drainage is really important because if we're not draining, we're not healing, we're not getting rid of things. Really in school, they kind of drill that in our head, drainage, drainage, drainage. So we wanna make sure that we're draining what we need to get rid of and that we're supporting our body um, in all ways possible. So Antronex is really great for that. Good for the sinuses, good for the liver, like I said. Um, and if you're on that product and you're experiencing allergy symptoms, that's something that, you know, if you give us a call and we, we see that, it's something we're gonna recommend you take more of. Another thing, is called Allerplex, which all in all is short for, um, is um, Allerplex is an allergy complex. Um, is that something adults and children can take? Yes, so adults and children can take Antronex, and sorry, I do know my writing is backwards. Um, I, I Maybe if I try to switch my camera around, it would help out, but. Anyways, um, so Allerplex is an allergy complex, and what that does is that helps, again, with the sinuses um, and helps reduce inflammation in that area. It has something called fen fenugreek in it, so it smells really nice, kind of like a maple syrup smell. Okay, and then another one is called Allernest, and Allernest is a... Um, 
liquid and that in particular is what we call a tincture and a tincture is literally meant to open up drainage pathways and in particular um, we see that this really works best with sinus issues all right like I said those are things that if you have them at home they're great to um, use and have on hand if you are experiencing some sort of allergy or asthma flare-up um, another thing that you can do neti pot rinses um, you can do sinus rinses those can help also alleviate any allergy symptoms or pressure or mucus that sort of thing that could be happening okay now let's talk about the things that you can do to help your body um, on top of taking you know your supplementation program let's talk about the things you can do outside of that um, to help reduce those symptoms and help support your body so we have a good diet obviously is number one and what we want to do with that is we want high quality protein High quality protein is something that we really preach um, for for patients to be um, consuming each and every day. Those supplements to take daily or at the onset of. Um, if you suffer from chronic um, allergy symptoms, what? Sorry, I'm replying to a question. Um, if you suffer from chronic allergy symptoms, I would be taking those daily, so that way you're being preventative. Um, and on top of that, if they start to flare up even more, you can increase the the dosage on those. Um, but no, if you're somebody who does suffer from chronic allergy issues, I would start now and continue to take them um, long term. I have a couple of patients actually. Uh, success story I'll throw a couple success stories in um, who came in and one of them was getting allergy shots every week so she was going into the doctor getting these shots they weren't necessarily hurting or helping but um, she got on a program we were supporting her body supporting her sinuses in the way that they needed to be figuring out what was actually being depleted and she was able to stop getting those weekly allergy shots so things like that happen around to you all the time we're actually just getting to the root cause of what's going on and figuring out, hey, okay, this is the problem and here's how we're gonna solve it. Um, and she didn't have to go get those allergy shots anymore. And then on top of that, also, I had a patient who was on allergy medication. I don't remember if it was like Allegra or Claritin or Zyrtec, one of those things that she was on just over the counter. And she was actually, um, to, she just decided she's like oh, I'm just gonna stop taking these things and see what happens so she stopped taking them and she didn't feel any difference so they weren't really helping her or hurting her but then she noticed that her digestion got a ton better so that's a huge thing the the allergy medication her digestion had been off since she was a teenager and she's in her 40s now so her digestion had been off since she started taking these over-the-counter um, allergy pills when she was a young girl and she decided to stop and her digestion straightened out almost immediately um, because we also were supporting her body digestive wise it was just that little missing piece that she was continuing to take that medication and it was irritating her gut so badly that her digestion was never normal until she stopped taking that medication so that's a huge thing um, kind of speaks to the fact that you know um, those extra things that you take that could actually be be helping um could be harming other things in your body so something to think about when you're taking those over-the-counter um medications like zyrtec allegra claritin all of that okay all right so back to what we can do to help so this says high quality protein sorry i know um but anywho what we mean by high quality protein is you're looking at um, good sources of protein so looking at as much as you can again local um, when it comes to protein as much as you can organic uh, grass-fed free-range chickens that sort of thing because we want to make sure that they're receiving good nutrients from their food because 
what they're eating, essentially we're eating. So we don't want to be eating meat that was raised off of uh, things like grain and corn and all of that because that's how a lot more processed and we're not receiving as good of nutrients from that meat product when they're eating that kind of um, product. So we want to focus on things like grass-fed beef, um, grass-fed lamb, um, you know, free-range chickens, those sort of things. Um, and also if they're um, raised locally, even better, um, supporting a local farmer. And then on top of that, um, you're going to also know exactly what's kind of happening at that practice because you can ask questions of, of what, what goes on with those animals and how they're treated, how they're raised, all of that. So always ask your local farmers questions. They, they like it. Um, so those type of high quality proteins actually heal our body. So we need, we, us as humans, need animal byproducts to heal properly. So things like um, a vegetarian vegan diet can actually be detrimental to your health, um, especially long term, because what happens is your body's never completely healing, it's always breaking down. So we wanna focus on making sure that you get things like um, animal byproducts like meats um, and fats and things like that. So when we look at things like grass-fed beef, um, we always say get the 80-20, so 80% uh, lean, 20% fat. And then when you look at things like uh, pork, so pork is a, a great source of protein and fat, but please make sure you're getting a good quality source. So you want to make sure that there's no nitrates um, or sulfates aid, a, added to that um, because they're gonna they're going to throw those in there to preserve the meat, um, and those are just a chemical additive that you would be eating. So another thing that our body would see is foreign and it would not like. Um, another thing you want to do with pork products in particular, look at the sugar that's added to them. So please don't buy the prepackaged like Bob Evans sausage. We want to focus on higher quality brands, higher quality sourcing. So when you're looking at bacon and sausage, focus on, um, for example, name brands like Applegate um, is one I know that's good. And um, we want to focus on making sure that you're avoiding those nitrates the sugars that can be added to those pork products because especially in the morning um, our brain and our body runs off of good fat good protein right away so eating things like good bacon and good sausage good eggs it's all something that we encourage and I know a lot of patients actually love that and they're like I can have bacon and sausage I don't have to just eat oatmeal the rest of my life and I'm like yes eat all the bacon and sausage um enjoy those products because they're healing to the body and they're gonna help your body um recover more quickly um and then in the healing process in general it's gonna help push towards that as well and then um other high quality proteins you could look at things like fish so good um quality sources of fish are great so um things like wild caught fish um especially you know we live in the great lakes state so looking at those sources of, you know, whitefish or cod or things like that that you can get from your local lakes that are wild caught are important. So there's the difference between wild caught and farm raised and wild caught means, um, you know, they were not literally put into a, a pond or a body of water um, right next to all the other fish filled, filled, filled with antibiotics. They're caught out in the wild um, and processed as least as possible. So you want to make sure that you're um, getting sources of fish like that. So like I said, salmon, cod, whitefish, um, tuna, all of those things are really great healthy proteins and healthy fats. So we'll move on from proteins and we'll talk about fats. So fats are really important because essential fatty acids are essential for our body to function the way it's supposed to. So what that means is that our body doesn't produce them on its own. Essential means that we have to eat them from our diet. And most of those fats we're going to be getting from animal byproducts again. So that's why it is really important to make sure you're eating those um, meats and things like that um, because you're not going to get them from a lot of your vegetative sources. So what we want to do, like I said, is focus on higher fat proteins. So um, lamb, high fat beef, the 80-20, our fish, eggs, um, those are all really, really good sources of healthy, high quality fat. Eggs are probably one of my favorite sources um, for fat, especially in the morning um, or any time during the day. You can hard boil some eggs, make a good snack, um, and that's really healing and helpful for the body. 
Um, another good source of fat that we like around here is avocados. Avocados are great. Um, you know, you can put them in your smoothie. This morning I put them in my smoothie and my brain is spry, ready to go. So um, what it does is it helps with brain function. The brain essentially is made of minerals, water, fat. So we wanna make sure we're getting in enough of that good fat. And then also on top of that, um, you could eat things like nuts and seeds are a good source of fat. You wanna watch to not overconsume those because what can happen is they can also be a little high in the carbohydrate area. So just eating the recommended amount, um, whether you know if you look at that particular nut or seed, like a, a quarter cup or half a cup, I think is usually um, a good amount there. And then also what you wanna do is consume things like grass-fed butter my favorite. So grass-fed butter goes great with a lot of things and it's a really really good source of um, essential fatty acids. It's a great source of vitamin A and if you know what's going on in the world right now, which most of us do, um, vitamin A is very essential for your immune system to function the right way and fight off any foreign invaders that kind of want to come in and attack it. So getting enough um, grass-fed butter in is really great. So you would get your, you know, your essential fatty acids and your good vitamin A. That's what gives um, grass-fed butter its rich yellow color. So it's that good vitamin A. When you look at butter or margarine, aka plastic, um, and you're looking at that and you're looking at it in its whole form, can kind of be white or not very yellow to the color. Um, butter should be yellow and that is when you get that good grass-fed butter, you get that vitamin A, which gives it that nice rich yellow color. So we wanna focus on things like that. Um, you can cook with it, you can put it on your food, enjoy it that way, all of that is really great. Um, let me think if we are missing any other good. Coconut oil is a really good essential um, fatty acid um, or an essential fat in general. Um, you can use it for a ton of things. So you can use it to cook with. You can even use it for your skin. Um, it's really helpful in, in a lot of different ways. Um, but in particular too, when it comes to fighting off things like immune challenges or um, things in your sinuses, um, coconut oil is high in healthy saturated fats and um, things like um, immune challenges that maybe have a high affinity for the lungs um, can help be fought off with things like coconut oil. So we want to focus on, you know, good fats, good proteins, keeping our overall intake of carbohydrates at a lower level, um, which you're essentially going to do if you cut out things like wheat and sugars like recommended earlier. Um, you're going to find yourself focusing more on consuming better fats, consuming better proteins, and then you're going to find yourself focusing less on getting those higher carbohydrate foods into your diet. So you kind of just naturally weed those things out when you start focusing on what you should be eating. Um, lots of good vegetables. Uh, vegetables contain tons of good vitamins and minerals that we need for our body to function the right way. Um, and we want to make sure, again, we're replacing those minerals and nutrients that are being depleted from those outside stressors and sources um, like uh, metals and chemicals and immune challenges, things like that. Okay? All right. Then, let's see. What else? We should make sure that you are getting enough water. So water is very important. So making sure you're staying hydrated is huge, especially from a clean source of water. So you wanna make sure you're getting a clean source of water, um, you're staying hydrated, you're keeping your cells um, replenished so that they can focus and work and do their job and do what they're supposed to do to keep you healthy. Um, and we wanna make sure that Along with that, you're getting a good amount of healthy salt and minerals. So healthy salt and minerals are important because we don't really get them from our soil anymore. It's been really depleted, our top soil that we're supposed to get, you know, our magnesium and calcium and all of those things from uh, is only a couple inches um, thick now, which is really sad. Um, but a fun fact, in the standard process form where we get most of our whole food supplements, they kind of did a little experiment and they decided they wanted to see how much topsoil was at their farm. So what they did is they um, started digging 
and they got to 20 feet and they were still hitting topsoil. So they stopped because they didn't want to ruin anything they had going. Uh, so the, the supplements you do get from us that are packed with those minerals and those nutrients you do need are in fact full of them in giving your body exactly what it needs. That's why supplementation is so important because um, we're not receiving the things that we need to from our food anymore. Okay, and then along with that you could do um with with the minerals and nutrients that way you could put um high quality celtic sea salt into your water you know just a sprinkle um once a day is good uh you could get electrolytes so we have electrolytes here that you can put in your water i put them in my water daily um to make sure that my cells are actually absorbing the the water that it needs if you're drinking water and you're continuously having to go to the bathroom you're actually not absorbing any of that water and you can be flushing nutrients that you really should be receiving and you're not receiving those because you're not getting the minerals needed to absorb those so really important to make sure that you're you're getting your good healthy salt in another thing that I want to stress um, especially right now in a time where we may be become more sedentary because we're kind of house ridden um, I want to stress that we need to be moving we need to be active you need to go outside get some fresh air I know Michigan hasn't been super kind to us in the past couple weeks, but as much as you can, go out and get vitamin D when the sun is out. Again, vitamin D is essential to our immune system. It's essential to help protect our body. Um, and it's kind of essential to help you keep your sanity right now. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're getting fresh air. Look up at the sky. Go outside. Be active. Move your body. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're giving your body that kind of... Um, activity that it needs and it craves. We're not meant to be sedentary creatures where we're supposed to get out there and, and walk and hike and jog and do all those sort of things. Go play with your kids. Go have fun. Um, but with following CDC social distancing guidelines. <laughs> um, anyways, make sure you're doing those things. That's also going to help um, train your lungs and exercise your lungs. So, you know, people who do suffer from um, asthma and allergies and things like that, once those uh, symptoms start to reduce, you're just going to find it so much easier to enjoy those things that you really do like to do, such as maybe sports activities or um, playing with your kids, playing with your grandkids, being able to enjoy that time. So getting out there, moving, totally encourage it. It's going to help your health overall. All right. And I think that that is all we have today for asthma and allergies. So just kind of a quick recap. Reduce your sugar, reduce or eliminate dairy if you can, it's recommended. Um, reduce your wheat intake or eliminate that. Um, try to avoid those other chemical stressors that could be put onto your food, um, that you're putting onto your body, those sort of things. So, you know, organic produce, making sure you're checking out the things that you're putting on your skin to make sure there's no extra toxins in those. Um, making sure you're replacing the bad with good so our high quality fats, high quality proteins, um, good source of vegetables, things like that. A good source of salt is really important like we talked about. Clean water, making sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day. I would recommend about half your body weight in fluid ounces. Um, that's a good amount. And um, then just making sure you're moving, staying active, you know, moving your body, exercising your lungs. All of that's really important. All right, guys. Um, just to reiterate kind of what's going on in the office right now, uh, we are open on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 5. During that time, we are taking uh, phone consultations, so you are more than welcome to still get a nutrition visit. It will just be over the phone, and um, we're working with people um, and keeping programs up to date, making sure you're staying protected, making sure you're staying healthy. Um, and I know Shannon's mentioned it a couple of times, but continue to make sure you're taking your supplements regularly. Um, we're supporting you guys' as bodies um, with what we know to be best and keeping you well with the tools that we have. And um, in particular, what what those vitamins are that we're recommending are vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin D. And if you have questions about those or you want to make sure that they're in your program, please don't hesitate to call the office. Um, we are getting everyone the information that they need to take care of themselves, take care of their families. And don't forget we're here for you and um, we're here to support you and we care about each and every one of you. So don't hesitate to reach out, okay? Um, we will we'll keep you in the loop tomorrow. I will be doing um, a little uh, exercise 
video so that way when you're at home well, with all these gyms closed um, you can stay active and keep your body in shape and be able to fight things off um, it's supposed to be beautiful out tomorrow so please go outside enjoy the sun um, maybe go on a hike spend time with your family do all those great things um, and I will post that workout video tomorrow and kind of go through through some things that you can do at home with just your body weight so that's exciting you don't have to have anything um, just you and you just need you and some clothes that you can move in okay so we'll go through that tomorrow and we'll be keeping you updated um, on what's going on here in the office as best as we can and we are so happy to have you guys and if you need anything please reach out to, to us and let us know all right i hope everyone has a great rest of their day and we'll see you hopefully in a few weeks all right bye bye